Trinity Sports Medicine and Dr. Michael Scarpone are now offering two new preventative programs for both head injury and ACL injury. For our head injury program, get a baseline evaluation of cognitive functioning, allowing quick and accurate diagnosis with our nationally recognized impact training system. Our ACL reduction and strengthening programs are geared to help educate and reduce likelihood of an ACL injury. Call 740-266-3866 for your concussion screening or an individualized ACL prevention program with Dr. Scarpone and staff. Good afternoon. Welcome to week seven of the high school sports Starcast. We're here at Damon's Dual Sports Bar with uh, Fred Yance, and he's gone. Yeah. It's Casper. He's gone. Uh, he, Brent has a sick child, so he's at home being dad, which is fully, fully understandable. That's the more actually that's the most important thing we do. Actually, being dad and try to raise our children. Yeah, don't lie, Mike. He's outside the door. He's gotten so big he can't fit through the neighbor's doors anymore. <laughs> They're rectifying the situation and enlarging it. He'll be here next week. You know, we've been called two tons of fun. Well, the two tons is not here, but the fun is. So we're, we'll, we'll be ready to go. Hey, this week, uh, we've got Big Red hosting uh, Baltimore Mount St. Joseph. Uh, Big Red's homecoming game, of which we have four this week. We have four, we have four homecoming games with the teams we cover. Uh, Mount St. Joseph comes in at 4-1. Big Red had a nice, relaxing week off against East Liverpool. And um, Big Red's number one in the state, number one in the region. I kind of see the same thing happen. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, Mount St. Joe's comes in 4-1, and one, but they haven't faced a team like Big Red yet. Yeah, you don't think so. Big Red's defense is nasty. I can't see Mount, Mount St. Joe's being able to really move the ball against them, and that power running game is just too much. I, I honestly expect um, the young quarterback, um, I'm drawing a blank now, from Big Red. Young Marcus Prather? Marcus Prather, yeah, the senior quarterback. I think, sorry about that, Marcus. <laughs> I think he's going to, I think, expect him to have a nice game. I think this is a game that he can really start getting himself going as we make a little playoff run. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Expect Big Red to do what Big Red does. Uh, the, the problem, one of the three good games tonight, or this this week, is uh, Ferry goes to Indy Creek. And uh, this is, uh, Indy Creek is 15th in the D3 uh, re- Region 11. Ferry is 6th in D4 Region 15. Fer- Creek always plays them tough. I don't care if it's home or away. Two years ago was kind of an aberration compared to what Creek does with Ferry. But let's face it, this is uh, the playoff word for Creek. They they need this big time. So does Ferry. Ferry's coming off a nice 14-13 uh, nice win over Buckeye. Creek took care of business last week against uh, UL. Ooh, this could be fun to watch. And you're going to be there. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to be at this one. This, this is the one. This is probably the game I've wanted to watch the most this week, and I get to be there, so I'm excited. You just um, like the food. Don't lie. Oh, yeah, and Creek does feed you, so. <laughs> but, um, honestly, Martin Ferry has a very good running game. Absolutely. They, they run a lot of counters. Very tough, very tough running game. But Indian Creek hasn't had trouble against teams like that. Their trouble has been against St. Sam Lindsley, who, like, to spread it out, have athletes everywhere. This is actually a good matchup. I agree. Indian Creek. At the yep. beginning of the year, if you'd have told me Creek had, had two losses on their schedule, I would have said Martin Ferry was one of them. Right now, I can't say that. The way Indy Creek's playing and the type of game Martin Ferry plays, I actually lean towards seeing more Indian Creek as a favorite. Use. No, I think this is going to be a really good game at Kettlewell. That's going to be – I expect to see Kettlewell packed, by the way, on the Indian Creek sideline. Uh, one of the second homecoming game is UL Buckeye Local. Buckeye's coming off two just brutal one-point losses, and it puts them in a really bad spot for the playoffs. They need to – Kind of put everything, you know, kind of look in the rear, look through the windshield, not the rear view mirror because it's over. They need to take care of UL quickly this week and just go forward. Well, yeah, Buckeye Local, I think this is going to be a good game for them. I mean, coming off the two one point losses, they obviously need to get a bounce back game. Union Local does not stop the run. Union Local is not a very good football team. Buckeye Local runs the ball well and probably has the best running back in the valley. You do the math. Yeah. I'd ask him about this as his alum. Was he alum of Buckeye? Brent, don't worry. You're alum, you're, you're, your alma mater should do pretty well this week. All right, we've got Edison at St. Clairsville, uh, which was the biggest, which was a huge game last year. Edison came back with a 21-point deficit and uh, won it in triple overtime that nobody saw coming. Especially, I left early when it was 14 up because I had to do other things, but since he had their way, Edison comes off a tough loss last week to Harrison. St. C is number eight in the state. 
uh, it's just not going well for them. But they're not going well for the Wildcats. I was at, I was at last year's game, and I went into that game thinking Edison was going to lose, and then they were down 21 nothing, and I thought Edison was going to lose, and then next thing I know, I was there till like 11:30. I mean, it was an incredible football game. Um, the key to this game is going to be Shane O'Brien, Chris Graziani, and the running of Mark Smith more than anything. They have to be able to run the ball and eat clock. They've shown an ability to do that. They struggled last week, but they better find it again this week or it's going to be a long time. Yeah, they need to tackle in space because St. C does a really good job of getting their athletes in space. Good. All right, before we go to the next six games, Matt's coming in from Damon's, and he's going to tell us about what's going on. And, with these four big screens and all the food you have. Matt, how are you, brother? I'm doing great. Good to see you. Good to see you. What's going on? Well, I'm just uh, here to tell everybody to come on down to Damon's. Uh, my name is Matt Foley. I'm the general manager at the Best Western of Damon's. And we have all your postseason baseball action. Of course, uh, the Buckeyes, and the Steelers, and the Browns, and uh, some winning teams as well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Very nice. That was really nice. Anyway, anyway, anyway we want to uh, invite you down. We have uh, great offerings. Of course, our famous ribs and uh, burgers and steaks and uh, homemade soups every day and specials. So uh, I think we have it all for you. So we'd love to see you. Thanks, Matt. That, that's, better than any, that's better than any line he would add this week, so that was good stuff. That's good stuff. Oh, even some yeah, 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 that, was nice. team. that was really good stuff. All right, we're going to go to uh, what should be a pretty simple game, but they, this is another homecoming game. Tyler Consolidated goes to Oakland. TC is uh, winless. Oakland is, I think, 8th uh, in the state, 7th in the state in Class AA. This is kind of a image of mirror image of last year's when they played the winless Beaver local team and who came in and took care of Oakland. This is one thing that you know Coach Roberto was just preaching to his kids: don't overlook, don't overlook, don't overlook, don't overlook. And if they don't overlook, expect about five, six hundred yards of rushing. Yeah, they're gonna. This, Tyler Consolidated again is not a very good football team. Oakland has one of the best running games in the Valley. They they run from the quarterback slot, and then they have a weapon on the outside, and Jeff Hissel yeah, that's just is is amazing. I mean, the kids only caught seven passes, but five of them were touchdowns. Plus, he has, a, I think, two punt returns for a touchdown. So, basically, all he does is score touchdowns, Chris Carter style. Yeah. So, I mean, the, Come on, the, this is a dangerous football team going up against a, an undermanned squad, so I just expect the player to run right through them. One other game we have is we're going to Magnolia. We're as winless. I watched him for the first half last week. I think Jason Kexio is doing some really good things. It's just going to take time to build this thing into where he wants to be. Uh, Magnolia obviously isn't Mag the Magnolia of the past. The Magnolia still should take care of this. I just want to see. I just want to see Oakland, uh, not Oakland, excuse me, where I get some uh, confidence on offense. Uh, they do some good things up defense. I just want to see him get some confidence on offense with the running game of uh, Andy Marshall and Zepatoshny and Pyatt. And just get those things going. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a game. Obviously, Magnolia isn't as good as they, they usually are, but they're they're probably still the better team here. But I'd like to see Weir start rolling some positive things going into the end of the season into next. Next year, they got a couple of game, winnable games down the stretch with Tyler Consolidated and a struggling Central team. And Liverpool. And Liverpool. See, you know, they have three team games that are very capable, very capable of winning down the stretch to get something going. And this could be the beginning of positive things for Texas and Company. Yeah, because he, he's he, Jason's still pretty positive with his kids, and, and it just takes time. I know in this. I, I know in this world of I want it now. Look at give them, give them in. Look at Toronto last year. They started off 0-4, oh, oh, four. go 4-2 four down the stretch, and now it's 4-2 now. Speaking of the Red Knights, dude, that was good. Thank you. Uh, Toronto was 10th uh, in the region, Division 6, Region 21, and they're going to Bellsville, who's 7th uh, in the region of Division 6, Region 23, and Bellsville's coming off a tough 7-6 loss to Shadyside, and you know... I would think Coach Meek and the staff have watched that film over and over and over again, trying to figure out what Shadyside did defensively to hold down a pretty solid Bellsville offensive team. Obviously, Toronto has gotten it going offensively with the running game, not passing a whole lot, but when you run the ball that well, you don't need to pass. Um, Bellsville is known to be a scoring team. Yep. They don't bring in a lot of defense typically. Last year, Toronto ran all over them. I believe that's the game. Um, Tom, uh, uh, young um, Devontae McGee Devontae had his 382-yard um, game. Yeah, but, um, Bellsville showed some weakness in offense last week against Shadyside. We don't know if that's just a matter of Shadyside's defense being that good or if they just found a game plan that's going to work against Bellsville. We're going to find out because you know Toronto is going to see that film and they're going to they're going to make some adjustments. And if when you score a lot of points and you're wide open the way Bellsville is, 
the biggest cure for it is actually on the other team's offense. And Toronto has that with their running game. Yeah, they have a power running game. They have three running backs that have hit 100 yards this season. Um, Ralph King, Shane Mosty, and Aaron Thompson. And that line is just nasty up front. They, the way they're blocking right now, I, I think I could get 100 yards running behind them. Maybe not. Really? I could get 55, maybe. But no, we could. Uh, they're playing very yeah. well up, up front right now. So. I remember Bert, uh, when we did our photo shoot for the cover, Jeff Weecher says, I just want to run the football. I just want to beat people up and run the football. And that's pretty much what Toronto's doing. Another really big game uh, Friday night is over Jimmy Carey's Jerry, where Madonna is coming off just a like, tough loss to. Bridgeport with no time on the clock. If, they, if ever was the uh, cliche of play till it's zero 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 zero, that was it. And then one play after zero 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 zero, they've taken on uh, Class A rival Bishop Donahue. Madonna's three and two. This is they're 16th in the region, uh, six, 16th in the Class A standing. That's not a good place to be when you're hosting Bishop Donahue and you still have Wilhelm on the horizon. This is a if it comes to must-win, this is a kind of a must-win game for the Blue Dons. Yeah, I would agree with you. I mean, obviously, I mean, you got Wahama on the schedule down the stretch. You have a Toronto team that's obviously playing, playing, playing well, well yeah. down the stretch. That, so, I mean, this is a game they have to win against a very good Bishop Donahue team. So it's not a given that no. you're gonna that you're just gonna take that win. Um, Madonna's gonna have to find that balance, get Comus going, both running and throwing the ball. Um, Christian Rowe. And that and that defense is gonna have to step up. Yep. This. Yeah, if there, if there is a must-win for any team this week, I would have to say it's from, from Madonna right now if they have any intent on making noise in, in yeah, the last eight this year. I completely agree with you. And I, I think they can do it. They just just got to get it done. So at some point in time, you got to make plays. And obviously, Chris Porter made two plays with no time on the clock last week. All right, now you're on Mater, who had a nice mutter. Going to Connaught Valley, they're playing a tough. They're going to a tough Barnesville team that's uh, what's fifth in Division Five, Region Seventeen standings. Um, this is a this is a tough uphill battle for your blue. Yeah, I mean, the last week I was actually impressed with one thing: the, the field conditions were awful at Connaught yep. Valley, and they came out and they they ran the ball. I mean, it wasn't a, a completely dominant running performance, but they but they, they the did enough to get the job done. Um, Jimmy Pinella had a nice game yep. running the ball with, I think, 116 yards. Emerly had a nice job. Yeah, Emerlin played a, a good game. That's a tough kid. Um, what, I would, what I would say is they need, and I said it last week, they need balance. If they have any uh, any hope of beating Barnesville, it can't be 40 passes, 10 rushes, or 40 runs, 10 passes. You're going to have to find some kind of balance, keep Barnesville off, off, off balance, and you're going to have to score some points. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I forgot he's not here. Yeah. It's so quiet without him. It's amazing. I feel better about this. Hi, <laughs> Brent. <laughs> All right, Saturday afternoon, Harrison Center goes to Nelson Field to, play, uh, to take on Bel Air. It's a big game for Harrison. They're coming off a huge win against Edison. Put themselves right back in the playoff hunt. Saturday afternoon game. Uh, can't be a letdown game, though. We know Bel Air likes to spread the ball. I think if Maurice might get the ball, Hython might get the ball, Martinez might get the ball like 50 at least 50 times. Yeah, I mean, that that's going to be the difference in the game. Harrison Central has a balance and a running game. They can keep Beller off the field. Um, I expect Python to get the, the ball a lot. I mean, this is a kid that consistently gets the ball 25, 30, 35 yeah. times a game. He doesn't seem to wear down during during the action. Um, and then the balance they have with Miser. They'll probably run the ball more this week to keep Bellar off the field, but um, their ability to hit that big pass play, especially out of a play action situation, I, I don't think Bellar can really no, account I, for that. No, I agree with that. They just they just don't want to get in track with Bellar. Yeah, just no. don't want to get in track with Bellar. Well, that's all ten. Um, we want to congratulate John Mike. John Mike Humanity got the uh, trivia question last week, and uh, this week's trivia question is really simple. If you're watching, and if you can count, which I'm not sure you can do. I know I can't. I can't. And we know he can't. Uh, how many homecoming games are on tap this week for the schools that we cover? How many homecoming games are on tap this week for the schools we cover? Uh, send your uh, answer to sports at heraldstaronline.com. Winner gets a gift certificate to Damon. See you next week. See you, Brett.